But back here in the studio, we're talking recycling as a process of making or manufacturing new products from a product that has been used and discarded or thrown into the trash bin. Despite the fact that more than 90% of waste in Ghana are recyclable, there appears to be very little effort to address the escalating problem. Recycling is the most hygienic way of managing waste in the country and the government stands uh, to create jobs and generate lots of additional revenue if recycling is given the priority. And I know that we've had hmm, lots of instances where we talked about recycling. Today, we're taking you to another level on some of the ways that we as a country have been introduced and hopefully to spread it across the entire country. In the studio, I have the CEO of Nelson Ghana Limited, Elvis Uwusu Adansi, to tell us what he has been doing in his own um, small way. I don't think it's small way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that, that's the cliche part, but I know that with all that is happening, something good is going on with our waste. Good morning and good to have you. Good morning. So what and what and what are you interested in recycling? Okay, when we talk about recycling... In, in your capacity? Yeah. Uh, almost everything mm. that you can think of. Mm. How, how, which waste, to be precise? Solid waste, liquid waste. How do you get the waste to your, your factory? Collection. You, your, your own men? Or sure. Or you, you rally around anybody who is ready? We advertise to companies and then individuals, mostly companies. Mm. And then upon the availability, we are called trucks, go there, and then it is collected. Mm. But I might say that recycling is best done when we start right from source. That is mm. what we call the source separation. Mm. When you go to the Western world, that is the basic of recycling. Mm. And that is what we are failing to do. Mm. And that is what is giving recycling the problem that we're having now. Mm. So with that particular thing you've talked about, let's look at the face. Um, how, how does it look like in Ghana so far? Actually, we're doing something, but it's not enough. Mm. We're doing something, but it's not enough. Recycling involves everybody coming on board, right from the producer of the waste, mm. that is you and me, mm. through the processes and then the legislators, mm. that is the government, the assembly, mm. they play a very, very, very vital role. Mm. Without them, recycling will just be as what we are having it now. Yeah. The thing is, we've all talked about it. We are grossly overwhelmed with wastes, especially plastic and the one we call boiler. And there are a few recycling plants happening in the country. It doesn't look like much is being done. It doesn't look like you get a few people to bring you a little waste and that's it. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Recycling is a little bit expensive. So we need the hands of everybody. That is the producer, the processor, that is myself, and then more especially the government. For example, when you go to the Western world, after plastics going through their normal processes, mm. it comes to a point that you cannot use it again as a secondary raw material. Mm -hmm. So it must be turned into a fuel. Mm. So plastic is produced into what we call agglomerates. Give me a look of it. Let me see. Refuse dry fuel, like this. Mm. And these are used by cement industries like, for example, Heidelberg, which happens to be one of our key customers in mm. Germany. Mm. And then the steel industries. So when you go to Germany, but at now, they are mandated by law to use this renewable fuel mm. before they resort to a petrochemical fuel. Mm. And then companies that patronize the use of these renewable fuels are giving tax reductions. Mm. So it mm. encourages the producer. So there's, a, a, there's a cyclical process of sure. making the end user or the processor of this particular fuel benefit. That's right. The but when you come to Ghana, there's nothing of that sort. So it's like when you invest in a plant that will turn the end product of plastics and other burnables into, let's say, mm. this. It, it doesn't really have use this year. You send it to the industries and they either decide to pick it or not. Well, if they, ha they don't have the machinery to use it, 
obviously there's this nothing to feed it to this is just a fuel so you just feed it into your kiln that's all but it's like producing this is a bit expensive mm -hmm. so it needs some rebates mm -hmm. or some reduction in certain areas mm -hmm. to make it more viable or economically sustainable mm -hmm. but if those measures are not there why will he go for rdf for let's say one dollar a kilo and what's the rdf that's refuse derived fuel okay for one dollar per kilo mm. whilst maybe he can go for petrochemical fuel like lpg or whatever for let's say half that same price mm. before we get into actually the uses of this particular raw material or products now it becomes um the the cyclical problem of starting with the sorting of the refuse how holistic has it been? Have we been able to drive this information or awareness creation home, maybe with the metropolitan assemblies or with the households? What has been the area of directing this awareness? The household has become a little bit of a problem, but with the industries, they're really cooperating. Mm. But as I said, with the households, it's like when you encourage them, when you educate them to start what we call the source separation mm -hmm. and they do at the end of the day what happens do you, do, would you go and pick them up yeah we do as a company we do but it's like the infrastructure and then the logistics are not enough to go around everywhere and meet everybody's needs mm -hmm. so at the end of the day he or she separates it will be there and it will not be collected. Mm -hmm. They are not being collected because after processing what nests. Mm. It's like, as I said, that legislation backing recyclable materials mm. is not there. Mm. So it's like a few are being picked. So when he or she separates a day, two, three, you are not coming. Mm. Next time he will stop. Unfortunately, I'm tempted to say, looking around our environment, we, we, we're getting comfortable with doing things this way. Everybody picks up a certain area and comfortably works within. There's no interactive, collective support and structure uh, amongst ourselves. The waste people come around and collect the waste. How has it been to indicate to them that, okay, from your source, because we know they are regular in this area, let your, your, your generators know that they can sort. And then we will come from, for it from your your end because we know that you're picking anyway how has that also been, been been done as i said with the households it has been a little bit of a problem the person should sort their waste into different fractions like and it's regularly collected actually like lately like recyclables and then the non-recyclables mm -hmm. which means the person needs more than a bin mm -hmm. minimum two mm. So the question is, is the person getting those two beans? Yeah, but so, so you guys should collaborate. Sure, which we do. But as I said, when I buy two beans, or let's say three or more, distribute them, it costs money. Mm -hmm. When I get the materials, processing them also costs money. Mm -hmm. So after processing them, if I take it to the industries and they don't patronize them, I lose. So I must pick at a pace where I wouldn't lose. Mm -hmm. But as I said, if the legislation is there, it will, let me say, entice the industries to patronize these goods. I heard on the news that one of these paper industries is collapsing. But meanwhile, when you pick the waste of Accra, we have about 7 to 10% of the fraction being paper. Mm -hmm. You go to Mokola, all the fruit juices and those stuffs that are coming in come in paper cuttings. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, those paper cartons find their way into the beans. Mm -hmm. So if these industries are helped and then giving some tax rebates, a reduction in their taxes so that they will patronize this secondary raw material, that is this paper from the markets, mm -hmm. they will readily do. And then we, the recyclers, will be in business. They will also be in business. And then the nation will also be clean. Mm. It looks to me that in as much as we are talking about the act of recycling, the business environment obviously needs a certain collaboration, uh, whether public-private partnership or private-public partnership. There, there needs to be a certain incentive given here and there to ensure that everybody has a fair 
playing field. Mm -hmm. But it looks like sometimes we are looking at our profit margin, we're looking at our comfort margin. We don't want to break through or perhaps blaze a trail on our own and help start something up. We are either looking at government to give us the incentives, otherwise we will hide in our little corner. And basically that's why we're having recycling problems, even I, though we have recyclers around. I think that is not the issue. But everybody is calling for policy. In as much as policy, it's necessary. Because so how, how can we move beyond policy? The policy shouldn't be a one-sided, but it should be a win-win. Mm -hmm. For example, we are into electronic waste recycling, mm -hmm. which we've started on a pilot phase, mm -hmm. and it's really booming. Mm -hmm. We collect from industries and then households. We send it to our treatment plants. We dismantle them into the various fractions like plastic, copper, aluminum, etc. The steel, by law, we must give to the steel industries, which we do. Mm -hmm. Then this material is sent to our mother company in Germany for further processing and then sale. Mm -hmm. From next year, we're going to increase capacity and then get more hands. Back to this same legislation, it's like if the paper industry is, is let's say, paying 25% for using virgin material, mm. tax, okay, patronize recycled paper and then pay, let's say, 10% corporate tax, mm -hmm. he will readily do. Mm. So as his cost is being reduced, he will definitely come and then buy the paper. Mm. So if I'm giving the person who comes to, let's say, supply this recycled paper to me for, let's say, X Ghana CD per kilo or per ton. Mm. Because these companies are patronizing. I can even go beyond X Ghana CD per kilo or per ton to, let's say, X plus one. Mm. Because demand is high. Mm. And everybody will be winning. So the legislation is not necessary to force uh, someone for the other to gain. Mm -hmm. No, this re the recycling companies are really doing well. A win-win camp. A win-win. A win-win-win situation. situation. So what has been what has been the problem? Is it that we haven't found the benefits good enough? Is it that people have not given themselves to the understanding of what is going on, or it's just been identified as a business entity for people who think they can uh, venture into the sector, and so nobody's really given ear? Has there been dialogue anyway? The dialogues are going on, but it's like we have the perception that when we talk about waste, it is a work that must be given to people with not so qualified educational background, mm. which is not true. Collecting baller is not a profession. That, 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 yeah, <laughs> we, we, we see that, okay, yes, it's a miniature job for the ordinary person, but it's not true. Mm. Because people have their masters and then their PhDs who are handling mm. waste. That is one of the, perce per the perception. And then the, sec the second aspect is, it's like we don't have much industries that will patronize these recycled materials. Mm. So at the end of the day, we have to look at markets like India, China, Turkey, and the stuff. Mm. And it's like everybody is sending his or her recycled material to either India, China, Turkey. Mm. So that market is choked. Mm. But if there is the the demand for it here here in ghana mm. it will really boom and how would it be through legislation okay mm. companies come set up recycle plants and then maybe you get this incentive a reduction in tax this etc etc we should woo these companies into the system for them to set up industries that will patronize these recycled materials here mm. other than that we will recycle them and then people will go for it, as we saw on the feature, and then put in palm oil and the stuffs for us to eat. <laughs> no comment on that one. <laughs> that, that, that is the problem. The other fact is, in as much as, I mean, for me, that's where I'm, it's making me move from the nitty gritties of recycling processes and which materials can be recycled. But the thing is, if, if we haven't found it as a country, that garbage is overwhelming us. So we should have policy on even how much profit you are making on the raw material that we call waste. Then it's strange. But on the other hand, how, how have you been able to entice industry with your products? It's like uh, in the 
first state we educate them on the need to do things the right way. Mm. It's like, let's say, a very big company producing products that are patronized by everybody, well-known companies, and then you find your end products at places that are causing a nuisance to the public. Mm. When they become aware of such issues, it encourages them to, to, to do things the right way. Mm. That is one In a part of the world, nobody will blame you for it because you are not the end user. But luckily, some legislation is working on the, let me say, the international companies here mm. to do things right. Oh, they, they, they know from where they're coming from that it mustn't work that way. But and EPA, obviously down here... EPA is also on the neck of these companies. Them. So okay. they are also doing things right. Mm. So they come. And then we also try as much as possible to make things flexible and a bit affordable. Mm. Not at our expense, of course, but mm. a win-win situation mm. so that we pick their waste and then handle it the professional way. Mm. So sometimes they come to our recycling plant to see how the used computer or the microwave oven that is no more in use is being dismantled mm. and then where those end products are End up. going. Mm. And they become very happy that at least they are waste is not ending up somewhere and then causing diseases and other nuisance to people mm. around. Mm. So they are really doing but well. But do we get those people to patronize, especially if in their process of manufacturing they can use some of the recycled products? I even saw a bag when I was coming into the studio from sachet water and I was very happy. Mm. It's like nowadays you see people buying made in Ghana bags from recycled plastic, which is very good. We're doing well, but I would say we must move a step ahead mm. by going into industrialized processing like RDF, refuse derived fuel. Mm -hmm. Because to get a fuel of this size, you need hundreds of kilos of waste. Mm -hmm. So it's like it takes away the waste in large quantities other than manufacturing bags and wallets and all those things from the mm -hmm. sachets. Mm -hmm. So these three different uh, kinds of fuel, I, I presume, sure. uh, are they from different uh, sources? Of yeah, from different waste? sources. It's like when plastic is recycled to the last level, it's like you pick it up from the waste, you send it to be processed. And I must tell you that if you're wearing, let's say, a cloth with some percentage of polyester. Don't be surprised if you are told that that percentage of polyester in your material mm. is coming from somebody's garbage. <laughs> and the thing is, the, the, the same almighty plastic that we are complaining about sure. all over the place. That is what we wear in our, like, our raincoats, our jackets, and all those things. Mm. Go to China. Mm. All the polyester yarns are from the plastics, mm. which the Europeans mostly produce, they use, they send it there. It becomes the cloth, and then we all... The same one that is stuck in the Odo River. Sure. Mm. And the, the middle one is... Which one? And the, the middle one is from organic waste. This is from plastics, and this is from organic waste. Mm. And what do you use? People that don't see uh, composting as also recycling, mm. but I beg to differ. Because after eating, or maybe peeling your cassava, your plantain, this food rests. It's not only for their goods. No. <laughs> You keep it for some time mm. and it becomes manure which you can put back into the soil and then when waste is recycled and recycled and recycled and the qualities or the substances in them are no more mm. the last option is to incinerate them mm. produce energy and then the ash is what you see here and that's for what? And that is for land reclamation. We're oh. doing alluvial mining, surface mining, and another day we go and then use dynamite on mountains, mm. get the sand to come and fill up the land. Mm. Whilst we can process waste, get the energy out, use the sand mm. from the incineration as a form of land reclamation or even composting. Mm. As a form of land reclamation. So this is where we have to where? go. Well, I think I agree with you on the policy bit and even more on the holistic way of handling it together. Where you profit, I profit, and then we balance the equation on 
on that and it's it's been new age elsewhere for so long so i think we just we should just catch up with it and benefits uh, at the maximum as much as we can so thanks so much um, elvis for joining us and sharing this with uh, with us and good work done we know that you're profiting as well, but we won't be bothered about that <laughs> too so, much. So if you have your e-waste, your electronic waste, get in touch with Nielsen okay. because we're handling them. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us.